multiple channel dual channels now up to this point we have been looking at single channel waveforms now what's good about that you can identify the waveform see what's good or bad which is good dual channel waveforms the purpose of that is to relationships a good example would be a TPS and mass airflow sensor like on takeoff do they both respond the same uh, what else would be a good thing oh front and rear O2 sensors okay how they respond next to each other left and right bank O2 sensors heater O2 sensors that's also a good one and the most difficult one is timing belts before you take the car apart you may be able to you may be able to identify if the timing belt is jumped the tooth or somebody installed it wrong that takes a lot of practice but dual channel waveforms is good for this purpose so let's get to it okay again we're gonna look at known good known good dual channel waveforms here's the first one this says gm3x signal gm3x crankshaft signals okay the top one's 18x the bottom was a 3x signal 18x meaning it has 18 teeth on the shuttle blade this is for in, this is for the rpm into the icm or pcm okay you can see it's going i think it's going from seven volts towards the ground and it repeats this up you can see it's all nice repetitive signals all the teeth are cut the same 18 x's okay i call it 18x signal they use this for a uh think it, yeah this is a crank input sorry the bottom one is a 3x signal the 3x signal is to identify which coil to fire okay you look at this it like it's going from seven volts down the ground but you look at this the three different sizes this identify which coil to fire, which coil to fire an uh, engine position to fire a particular coil now this is three different teeth on a shuttle blade of the, of the crank if I lose this top 18x signal remember these are known good waveforms if I lose this top signal I lose fuel injection and spark on this one to identify the coil I will still if I lose this one I'll still have an injector signal but no spark because remember this controls which coil to fire if I lose it I still have an injector but I won't have no spark this one I won't have no I won't if I lose the 18x signal, I will have no spark and no fuel. All right. And again, like I said, there's a known, there's a known good waveforms. Let's go to the next one. Now we're gonna look at a GM opt, optimum sp Audi spark. Now we're gonna look at a GM. ID spark this now we're gonna look at a GM RT spark distributed signals. Now we're gonna look at a GM ID spark distributed signals. You see the top one is the cam signal. If you're looking at this, you can also notice we got a very skinny one, needle-like, every other one. See that? Every other one, there's a skinny one. But right next to it, there's another squirrel wave at different sizes. Four, four of them, different sizes. So you see, it's four of them. Eight signals is one camshaft revolution. That's meaning that the computer can see the engine position unless, unless about, a, about half the crank revolutions. It means, yeah, that's right. Yeah, one revolution, you can see eight of these, one camshaft revolution, you see eight, and one camshaft revolution, that means the computer can see the engine position and half the crankshaft revolutions. That makes it easier to, I got that right. I think I got that right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that means it's quicker start for the, quicker start for this vehicle. Well, the cars might start, take a longer, longer time to start. This, this one will start much easier. Okay, so this is a, this is a, so this is a GM ID spark to serve the signal. I think they found this on the Corvette. I think that's on the Corvette. Okay, what we're going to see now is the GM Optimal Spark Distributor Signal. Both of these are five, five, both of these are five volt square waves. This top one here identifies similar position for fuel injection sequ sequencing. You also notice, look at this, take a good look at this picture. 
we also going to notice that we have five volts. I'm oh, sorry, five volts. A skinny signal, skinny signal, skinny, skinny, along with a a size here. Look at the size of this. Look at the width of this. Compare to this one. That's two, three, four, eight signals. Okay. So we got a skinny one. Every this is and remember these are known good patterns. So we got a very skinny signal every other one, and next to that one we got four different sizes. And the reason they do this is to identify specific cylinders. Eight signals, one revolution of the camshaft. The piece of can identify engine position. All right, and half the crankshaft rotation. What that means is this car can start a lot faster. So that's why some GMs look to the 18x signal. Also, to get the car start faster and a smoother, smoother idle. But anyway, for this for this particular one, that's what that's what that's for. All right. And also, yeah, yeah, I already said that. Also, it also give a quick start too, faster. I said that already. Now the lower one. Look, now look at this lower one. You can see at the top one, right, is different. Okay. Upper signal, this for and again, remember, it's engine position. The bottom one is crankshaft position. It's a, this, this is actually RPM signal. And this particular inside inside the distributor, it has 360 slots in this particular case. Alright, on the trigger wheel. One revolution provides 360 square waves. Alright, the computer sees each degree of rotation of that crankshaft. So this is my RPM signal down here. And for this particular vehicle to work, a start slash run, the computer needs to see both these signals. Missing one will not start up. So we got the top one, upper signal, is for engine position, for fuel injection sequencing, and to identify each particular cylinder, the bottom one, RPM signal. For each degree of crankshaft rotation with 360 slots in, inside the distributor. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, what we got here now is a Ford 4.0 liter crankshaft and camshaft signal. Okay, we have in green is the cam, sorry, no, the crankshaft, I'm sorry, it's the crankshaft signal, right, it's an AC signal. Remember, each AC signal is 10 degrees before the top, the 10 degrees, sorry, it's 10 degrees. The missing tooth here, here, and here is 60 degrees before the top dead center. This piece here, you see here, half high and half low, come from high voltage to low voltage, it's the cam signal. <clears throat> That's the cam signal. It's your, it's your cam sh camshaft signal. And what we're looking at here is this cross point right here. They're looking at where it crosses at right here. That's a very important for alignment. Because some of these distributors, you know, the, the earlier models, you, you like a, like a distributor, but it's not. Has a cam sensor in it, you stab it in, when you, or you reinstall it if you replace it. You take it out and reinstall it once the cam sensor is replaced. It's on alignment. They sell tools for it, but for scan tool, I'm sorry, a lab scope, you can use this. This is coming at 26 degrees at the top dead center. You can see here, this is 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0, top dead center, 10, 20, 30. It says 26 degrees right here before top dead center, I mean at the top dead center. And on the earlier models, it's also 26 degrees going back up. Re recrosses it. I think it recrosses it. So anyway, right here is 26 degrees at the top dead center. And and keep in mind, if you know that alignment, it's important when you once you reinstall it, all you would have to buy a tool. Now, if I'm installing this, if I am installing this, right, distributor, I can I can actually turn the cam sensor, like the old distributors, left or right, to try to line this as close as possible to get this lined up. Like I said earlier, this is coming at 26 degrees at the top dead center. That's very important to, uh, for injector timing. To, that line is very important for the injector to operate the correct time. Okay. So if you don't know how to scope, you have to have a tool. 
Make sure this lines up at 26. On the early models, like I said earlier, it's 26 degrees at the top this head and here and, and across over down here at the cross point. On the uh, later models, it's 26 here and 36, 36 at the top this center at the cross point. In summary, this is the crankshaft signal. Each AC signal is 10 degrees. This space right here is a missing tooth. That's 60 degrees before the top this center here and here. All right, this yellow line, 14 volts, you can see over here, it's a can signal. Half the time high at 14 volts, then it's pulled down to zero volts. Then it repeats itself. All right, and back high again. That one revolution, that's one revolution. What's important here is this alignment right here. This is 26 degrees at the top, this center. Again, like I said earlier, right, that's good for the inject, to get the injector to operate the correct timing, the correct time. So I got 60 here. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0, 10, 20, 30. So right here is about 26, 26 degrees. Okay. On the earlier models, it's number one is 26 here. It came out number one for 26. And it repeated itself over here at 26. The later models, number one is at 26. And it recrosses at 36. But either way, this is a good pattern. And all yeah, and also I forgot in summary again, forgot to say, I said it earlier. This is the type of distributor you reinstall if you place a cam sensor. It looks like a distributor, it's not a distributor. It's a cam, it's a cam sensor inside a distributor like unit. When you reinstall it, you can use your scope like this to align it, which is important. Again, this is for injector timing. You can turn it either left or right to try to get it here at 26 degrees at the top dead center. If you don't have the tool, so you don't have the, have the scope, you can use a tool. They sell many different tools to do this with. All right, you have to figure out which one is the right tool. But if you have a scope, you can use this method. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Oops. Okay, let's go to the next one. Here is a uh, Ford 4.0 liter crank camshaft relationship. Again, just like the previous one, like this one. This is AC signal, missing two for 60. All right, this is a crank. The green is a crank. This light aqua or blue is the cams, a sine wave. The single signal is the sine wave for the cam. All right, the alignment is the same. We'll see the same alignment. As, at the zero point of this cam, we want to see it come down at 26 degrees at the top dead center. Okay, you want to see it kind of 26 degrees at the top dead center. Again, it's a no, this is also a known good signal. It, it, all right, it's a, and again, we could use the cam sensor and a crank to see the relationship between both parties. Okay, the next one. <clears throat> Here's a Dodge 3.3 liter crankshaft camshaft signal the bottom one the bottom one is the crank the top one is the cam by now you should understand that the gear the less signals is the cam the one the more signals the crank that's usually the rule of thumb okay uh, now you can see here that the top one uh, the cam signal it's not the whole that's not the whole picture it's all you can see on the school but this is the cam signal is the crank and you can see the relationship what you do see here, how this line of straight center between the, between the digital signals, between, between the square waves. Okay, if this was off, so you saw it lines up straight center here, right here, here, and here. If this was off, a common problem would be a, a broken ring gear, crack, flex plate, or the timing chain had jumped. But this is a good picture. And this particular model, we're looking for that alignment. Here's the cam again, that's the crank. On this car, they line up perfectly. This falls in a dead center here. These two fall in the center here. This falls in the center here. And these two fall in the center here. Down at the bottom of this crank, this is timing. These are grouped in pairs of four for timing. I think like six, nine, two, nine, something like that. But this is 
group for timing into some purpose for the PCM okay and again it's a known good picture The next one is, just did this one, right? And the next one is a 2004 Dodge Crank, <coughs> 2004 Crankshaft and Cam. Again, the one the less signals, it's a cam. This is a crank. Another known good signal. As you can see here, this is a known good signal. You can see how it rotates from low to high. But this is a good alignment. Camshaft, crankshaft, this is also a good signal. With well, this 2004 Dodge crankshaft and cam signal. Okay, here's a Jeep Chrysler cam and crank sensor. We got the crank here, the cam on top. Okay, this is also good. These are also good signal. You can see this. This also a good signal, a good picture. You can see how it toggles from high to low. Okay, and once you, once you take a look at this, how this toggles from high to low, right in the middle here. Low to high, right in the middle here. Okay, every three set. Also, every three sets. Every three sets. One, two, three. Of four square ways, is one level, one revolution. And you want this cam to fall right in the middle here, right in the middle here, up and down. This is about just looking about two revolutions here. A known good signal, maybe two and a half. I can't see this over here, but it's also a good signal. This is another good signal relationship. We got the cam on top. This 2000, 2005 Jeep Liberty 2.4. We got the cam shift, got, got the cam on top and a crank on bottom. Again, a good relationship for this particular picture. You look at and look how it does this. It goes low, then high, then low again. And this is normal for the camshaft in this car. So another good picture. Now we got Mazda Miata, crankshaft and cam. Uh, you should know which one's the cam by now, right? The bottom one is the crank. The top one's the cam signal, right? So keep in mind that the least amount of signals the cam, like I said earlier, this one is the crank, more signals. There's also, also a good picture of both signals. You can see, we've seen earlier, the different whiffs here, but we talked about that earlier. This this is a good relationship pattern here also. Now we got an infinity, all right? Two AC signals. Top is the crank, bottom is the cam. Okay, I'm pretty sure this may have something to do with triggering here. <laughs> but this is the cam signal. I'm sorry. This is the crank signal. This is the cam signal here. Okay, two good pictures on a door school. And nothing wrong with these pictures. You might see this, think something's wrong, or not, that's just noise. But again, these are two good signals. And the last one for the evening is Mitsubishi crankshaft and camshaft signals. Okay, we have the we, uh, both digital they both digital signal uh, square waves, the hey, they're both five volts. You see here, it's about five volts here and pull down to zero. This one's about five volts here and pull down to zero. All right, the bottom one's the cam, top one's the crank. Again, two good pictures in relationship in relationship to each other. Okay, our next class is going to be a single channel waveform low amp current probe. That will be the next one. One channel using the amp probe. And I love using Amp Pro. You can see a lot of things, the integrity of that circuit for Amp Pro. So, hope to see you then. Peace. I'm out.